All right, welcome to screencast number two for unit nine, lesson five. I'm on page 552. How can short-term environmental changes affect populations? Well, so sometimes environmental change, um, whether human-caused or naturally occurring, sometimes um, it's a fairly short-lived change. Okay, the change lasts, lasts for only a short period of time before the environment recovers things that might be considered um, a short-term environmental change would be things maybe caused by certain weather events, uh, heavy rains, or strong winds, or a blizzard, or, or, or things like that. Okay. Um, and what sorts of things might happen? Well, you know, heavy rain, you may drown uh, some organisms, whether they are plants or animals. Um, you can have wind break tree branches, um, you know, and and once that weather event occurs and has finished, most of the time your most of your your organisms in that area are going to be able to recover. But some, for whatever reason, whether they were uh, drowned or forced to move out of the the area or whatnot, some individual organisms can be lost from the populations. Okay, now. That's important because when an organism is removed from a population in an ecosystem, um, then their genetic information is also removed. So if they had um, certain traits uh, that were either unique to them or were found in very low amounts in that particular area, then that um, alters the genetic traits that are able to be passed on to future generations, whether they be, be genetic traits in plants or animals. Okay, So short-term environmental changes don't last very long, but they can have a long-term impact depending on what happens. All right, go over to page 553, and you have a couple of pictures. You have a birch tree, you have an eastern cottontail, and you have a caddisfly actually caddisfly larva, okay? And there are two questions that I would like for you to address, and we'll kind of go through those together. Uh, first of all, number 11, why might an animal have a better chance of surviving a flood or wildfire than a plant? Well, the first thing that comes to my mind is the fact that the plant is not mobile, whereas an animal is. So if there's a flood or a wildfire, the animal has the capability of moving out of the area, whereas the plant does not. Okay, number 12 says, how might caddisfly larva be affected by a flood caused by a heavy rainstorm? All right, well, um, there's a variety of things. First of all, if they're affected by how quickly the water is flowing through uh, the freshwater stream that they live in, um, and that has an effect on them. Perhaps that could have a negative effect. Also, if you are talking about a flood, perhaps there's a lot of um, soil that has been eroded and winds up in the stream or uh, pollutants like fertilizers and pesticides and things like that, which could um, affect the caddisfly larva maybe poisoning it or killing it or, or who knows. There's a, an endless variety of possibilities when you have an ecosystem that's been disrupted by some sort of event. Okay, so take some time and answer uh, questions 11 and 12. You don't need to worry about 10 and 13. Okay, all right, again, there's not a whole lot of highlighting to do, but make sure that you have done 11 and 12 and answered those. All right, I'm now on page 554, and we're going to talk briefly about long-term environmental changes and how they affect populations. Well, one of the most critical long-term environmental changes that we are dealing with right now is uh, global warming. So average global temperature has increased over the past 30 years, and remember this book was written probably almost 10 years ago, so we're talking about even longer than that. Um, and some people might say, well, what's the big deal about that? We've had uh, 
overall temperatures and, and climate warming in the past that we know has not been caused by human activity. But this time it's different because scientists can point to a very, very good relationship between the overall temperature increase that's been going on and the amount of carbon dioxide that is in the atmosphere. And they can uh, point to the sources of carbon dioxide as the burning, primarily the burning of fossil fuels, which is directly related to human activities. Okay, so what's going on? How does that affect everything? For instance, in the Arctic, the amount of sea ice has decreased tremendously. Uh, this change can affect polar bear populations, among other things. Uh, rising temperatures have also caused summer melting of permafrost. Permafrost is uh, soil that is permanently frozen. So for instance, the water content in the soil remains frozen. Okay, per Permanently frozen soil. But if temperatures rise, then that soil is not permafrost anymore. And this can alter the community of plant populations, for instance, in tundra. Um, increasing temperatures and increasing amounts of liquid water can um, allow tundra insect populations to emerge earlier in the year. Okay, we've also seen that in oceans the surface water temperatures have increased and uh, oceans have also become more acidic and we can point to um, factors that are directly uh, caused by human activities as, as the um, cause for many of these. All right, look at the illustration at the bottom of page 554. And I'm going to ask you to answer number 15. How has ice cover in the Arctic changed over the past few decades? If you look very carefully, um, kind of the purple is the area of ice cover um, at the North Pole, okay, uh, for 2007. And you can see that it's much smaller than the yellow outline, which was 2005. And it's much smaller than the kind of orange outline, which was sort of the median ice cover for years 1979 to 2000. So how has the ice cover changed? Well, it is obviously um, and disturbingly shrinking. Okay, what's the big deal? Well, you are fundamentally altering the habitats and the environments that depend on this being frozen ice. Okay. All right, look at page five and make sure you write that, you know, write an answer down. I, I've basically discussed it, but you need to compose an answer and write it down. All right, on page 555, long-term environmental changes may affect organisms' behavior. Well, long-term environmental changes, such as global warming, can affect the behavior of organisms. If, for instance, um, things start to thaw earlier in the spring, um, it can affect, for instance, when trees start to bud. Um, it can affect... Uh, migration patterns of birds, all sorts of things, okay? Uh, climate change can also have other effects on the behavior of animals. Caribou, for instance, could change their migration patterns, things like that. Um, basically, the problem here is, is that some populations might not be able to change their behaviors quickly enough and adapt quickly enough to those environmental changes and it's possible that those populations, because they cannot change fast enough, or they don't have the ability to change fast enough, they could become extinct. Okay. Um, so basically what we've done as humans is uh, sped up tremendously how fast uh, some environments are changing, and that's been directly due to human activity. And there are a lot of populations of um, either plants or animals, that cannot necessarily adapt that quickly. And when you lose um, plants and animals, you're losing um, essential parts of food webs. You're also 
uh, decreasing biodiversity. Remember, biodiversity is basically a nice fancy term for like all of the variety of um, living species in an area. And so the, the effects are complex, but can be very long term.